Hi again everyone, Chris Tisdale here. In this presentation, I'm going to uh, talk about how to solve PDEs with constant coefficients via a change of variables or change of coordinates. Okay, now in other videos, I've talked about um, the theory behind uh, the ideas and I've given some examples, but in this particular video, I'm going to talk about a special case where we have this PDE and the coefficients here are just constants. Okay, so we've got a first order linear PDE and to solve it, we're going to make a change of coordinates. Now, geometrically, what's going on here is we're actually rotating the axes uh, in a certain way so that the new horizontal axis lies along the vector AB, the, co the uh, coefficients of these two derivatives. Now, as we'll see, this will reduce the PDE to um, a PDE with only one derivative in it. So essentially, it's, it's an ODE. Okay, so how does it all work? Well, if we let alpha be defined in the following way, the tangent of alpha, an angle alpha, is the ratio of B on A, and if we set psi and eta to be these um, expressions here, then what we can do is consider u as a function of psi and eta, compute u sub x and u sub y via the chain rule, and then sub into the PDE1. Now when you do that, you'll see that there's some cancellation occurring with um, the partial derivatives, and you'll be left with one and only one uh, partial derivative in the equation. Now there are other ways to solve this uh, equation, but they'll be talked about in other videos. So let, let's actually do an example and see how it all works. Now at the end I'll, I'll sort of show you um, why this, why this, uh, you know, why we choose the, 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 the new horizontal axis to be lined up with this vector. It has, to, it has something to do with the directional derivative of u. Okay. Let's have a look at this problem. So, uh, here uh, the coefficients are all constants. F is identically equal to zero. A would be one, B would be one, and C would be negative two. So, first of all, let's determine our alpha, our angle alpha. So. Okay, B on A, just one over one. So, so alpha will be pi on four. Okay, so once we've established alpha, we can calculate cosine alpha, sine alpha, and write down our new uh, coordinates or our new variables, psi and uh, eta. Okay, so if alpha is uh, pi on 4, cosine of alpha will be 1 on root 2, and so will sine of alpha. So it's pretty easy to work out our uh, representations here. So this will be 1 on root 2, 1 on root 2, 1 on root 2, 1 on root 2. So if I combine that into the following, I now have my new coordinates or new variables. Okay, so let's now consider u as a function of these new variables. Let's compute u sub x and u sub y, the partial derivatives, via the chain rule. Okay, now with the chain rule, I always like to draw a little diagram to look at the, uh, the variable dependencies. 
So u depends on a psi and eta, psi depends on x and y, and so does eta. And we can use this little diagram to uh, establish our chain rule. Okay, so, um, so suppose we wanted to compute u sub x. So you start at the top, find all the roots to an x. When you go from letter to letter, you form a derivative. So u sub psi times psi sub x plus u sub eta times eta sub x. Okay, u sub psi, we don't know what that is, but psi sub x will be 1 on root 2. Plus u sub eta times eta sub x, eta sub x, is negative 1 on root 2. So if I combine those, I'll get the following. Now let's work out u sub y. So work all the, all the paths down to a y. u sub psi times psi sub y plus u sub eta times eta sub y. Okay, so psi sub y will be 1 on root 2. Eta sub y will be 1 on root 2. So we'll get the following. Okay, let's sub back now into our starred PDE. And this is where the magic happens because you should get some cancellation going on. Okay, so I've got following. Okay, and you can see the, the, these two terms are going to cancel out. Okay, so we're going to be left with um, the following. Okay, so you can see now in the new variables or the new coordinates, we've reduced the original PDE with two partial derivatives down to a PDE with one partial derivative. So we've simplified things. And that's generally the aim when you make a change of variables or change of coordinates. You want to take something uh, that's difficult and transform it to something that's simpler and solvable. Okay, so if I rearrange that, I can use ODE techniques. So just let's isolate the partial derivative. So it'll be uh, root 2 times u. Okay, so you can think of this as just basically an ordinary differential equation, first order. Uh, yes, use a function of two variables, but only one derivative appears. Okay, so I can, um, I know the solution to this is going to be some sort of exponential function. You learn that in a, a second course in calculus or a first course in ordinary differential equations. So u is going to be e. Ah, need to put in the constant. The constant which acts like uh, it, it's a, a function of integration here, okay? So it will be that times this. Okay, so k of eta is an arbitrary function of integration that acts like, you know, that, that, that is differentiable and acts like a constant of integration in o, for ODEs. Because remember, use a function of two variables here. Okay, so we've, we've basically solved for these new variables. What we want to do is now get back to u of x comma y. Okay. Okay, so let's replace eta with this and psi with this. So let's just make this a little cleaner. Okay, so we're going to have a root 2 here multiplying by this. The root 2 is going to cancel. And I'll get the following. And I'll just make a little note about this function k. It's an arbitrary but differentiable function. Okay, so we've solved the problem now. You can see that uh, 
we've got our solution here. And if you test your solution, if you differentiate, you know, differentiate with respect to x, with respect to y, and uh, evaluate this left-hand side, you will see that the solution, that this function really is a solution to our problem. Now, if we had an initial condition or some co co so-called Cauchy data, you could get this k here, but we don't have that in this case. Now, if you get down to here and you've still got two derivatives in your equation, then you've probably made a mistake. Okay, so check your work. So why does the method work? Why does these change of coordinates eliminate one of these derivatives? Well, you can see that this is almost the directional derivative of u in the direction of the vector ab. Okay, these two terms are almost uh, the directional derivative. If I divided this by root a squared plus b squared, then it would be the actual directional derivative. So if I divide everything through by that, uh, through by that, I can write the following. And if, uh, by the way, this is a unit vector in the direction of the vector ab. Now. If my new, a new, say, horizontal axis lies along the vector AB, then this directional derivative is being taken in a direction that is parallel to a coordinate axis. That means that this has one and only one partial derivative in it. So if you wanted to convince yourself of this, calculate the um, directional derivative of a function uh, in the direction of the x-axis. So your, your vector that you'd be dotting it with would be 1, 0 you just get du dx, okay? In a nutshell, that's why the method works.